talking about teaching in the UK and I remember I kept that flyer and I said one day I'm going to get to it and to apply for your visa you've got to be before your 31st birthday and so I knew I was getting pretty close to that and so my life kind of didn't go as planned and so I thought well you know what life might suck here so I said okay now it's now or never so last year I went and taught in England so I taught just outside of London um, and I took on a proper job I've spoken a lot to people who have done a bit of supply teaching or casual teaching and it doesn't seem to be a very positive experience at times because you get the horrible inner city London schools and I'm like I've come from a nice school here I don't want to then be dealing with behaviour issues and all that no I just want to know what it's like to teach in England and actually be in England so I took a proper job, I took a maternity leave position, um, which actually was really good because it wasn't a, it wasn't the position that you usually give someone from overseas, it was, I was teaching the highest level maths they thought I had, um, you know, I had half my load was teaching what they call a -Lens. so it was not what they would normally give an Australian teacher. But anyway, I just wanted to give you some background in terms of the UK um, Bible structure because it is actually quite different and it took me a while to get my head around everything. The start of, they have seven years in their high school. So they start at year seven, but that's what we call year six. And so that's stage three for them is year seven, eight, and nine. Then they've got what they call stage four, which is their GCSE um, qualification, which is at the end of their formal schooling. So like our school certificate stage. And then stage five, which gets called sixth form, which also gets called A levels, which is their last two years of school. So in terms of GCSEs, it's their final last two years of um, compulsory schooling. And what's interesting is that they must get a C grade in their GCSEs to actually be able to do really anything in a tertiary environment. So the big difference for us is kids who aren't performing well in maths, I guess, well, there's, no, there's no pressure to get a decent grade. Whereas these kids, a lot of these kids were working so hard to just get that C because they knew they had no option otherwise. You couldn't even do a trade. You can't even do a mechanic without a C grade. So that's a big difference I found there and something um, I wish maybe we could implement in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't mean you, I still had those disengaged kids who was like, I'm going to be a footballer. I don't care. I don't need a C. Not, no thought about, you know, what if that doesn't work out. So you still had those kids, but I just felt there was more of a push from the kids themselves to get that C grade. Um, there was also a lot of push from school, which was a big negative, because a lot of focus went on to those kids who were borderline, and those kids were then taken out of other subjects and given twice the amount of maths to get them over the line, which I was quite opposed to. Anyway, um, A levels. So A levels was a challenge when I got there because it's nothing like they, there is no mandatory. Like here, you have to do English, and a lot of people feel like maths is a compulsory, even though it's not. Whereas over there, you're only doing three or four subjects. So most kids don't do that. Most kids don't even do English. Um, you can do philosophy. You can, like, there's such a difference on the setup it is. A lot of places, it's actually a separate school. You don't even go to your own high school. You go to a place of college. You, you dress formally. You go to school in a suit, which just crazy. You've got all these 18 year old boys dressing like grown men, which was like, I can only afford all girls, that was a big shock to my system. Um, so, the kids who selected maths at A level, it meant that that was actually something they were really interested in. Not just, oh, I should do it because mum says I should, but they really wanted to do it. And you only had maths or further maths. So, there was no lower general. So kids who were doing it really wanted to do it, um, which did make a big difference as well. And you had a very high minimum standard. You had to get a B at least to be able to do maths at a, um, a level. Um, just a bit more in terms of A levels. So they had the mathematics course and the further mathematics course. And their mathematics course was, wow. I was teaching mechanics. Um, I was teaching permutations and combinations. We were talking about binomial theorem, nothing like you know what we would think of as like a normal mathematics two-unit course. So it was very different. They also had a lot more time spent in maths because um, a quarter of their time or a third of their time was in maths. Then, so you do have a lot more time um, to teach maths, which is why 
student who's come out with a pay level in mathematics and a Bible maths than a student from Australia who's come out with two in the maths. So I thought of it more like a three level. You're coming out with about a three level, but still some of that maths is far more beyond what we teach in our town. And with the further maths, I was teaching further maths, which was getting thrown into the deep end. I was teaching maths I've never seen in my life. Like I was doing complex numbers, great, I had to just quickly rehash that. But maths I'd never heard of. I was struggling with the textbook, the night before lessons, but I felt like I was a first year art teacher again. It was it was amazing. It was um, just being thrown in the deep end. And I don't even think I felt that like I'm sure about things in my first year of teaching. So it was real trial by fire. Um, okay, so just they do a big component was on if you're mathematics, just like our courses. But what I found really interesting was schools pick electives. So Mechanics was the elective that our school picked. We also picked statistics. Um, one big issue I know we have in stage six here is that we don't really have much statistics at all. So I said to them in my interview, I can't pick statistics. So they didn't get me statistics, luckily. But it's amazing. Like, the depth they go into as well, when you do the second level of any of those electives, is far beyond what we can do in first year maths. So the statistics they were doing is if you almost be doing, you know, your, your, your statistics. Decision math was a whole load of maths that I'd never seen or heard of, like they had theory of exam theory. Um, they had a lot of similarities in terms of what we might do in discrete maths <coughs> here. But just a whole different side of maths that you don't even realise exists. So for me that was really interesting because here we don't have electives here, it's just you do general maths, so quite essential too. So the thought of, you know, you can really focus on what interests you. If you're interested in mechanics and physics and stuff like that, you could do a whole, you could do all your electives in terms of mechanics. And out of interest, mechanics one was actually more like four unit mechanics, and mechanics two was more like three unit mechanics. So I found that interesting because I was teaching mechanics one, and I'm like, oh, this is the rusty stuff, and I'll be teaching mechanics two. The <coughs> um, so if you do further maths, you basically, you do more electives, but you also do further pure. And that was the subject I was teaching, I was teaching further pure. And it really is, I've got some really, well, it was really telling. Um, so this is just a little snapshot of what each um, module can include. Um, so the call was very similar to what we do, um, except I've had a lot of lectures in my life, and there was a few components and lectures that I had to learn <laughs> to teach. Um, hang on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is from a further map Format was just so foreign to what I'm using in the quarter studies papers. Out of interest, does anyone know how to do that? But not in high school. <laughs> like that's what shocked me. Like they're doing this in high school. This is nuts. Like I've never seen any. Like yes, okay, we see summation of bits and pieces, but nothing to that degree in high school. Um, just the fact that they're doing matrices <coughs> in high school. So it's just really interesting. Two minutes. Oh God. Okay. Um, and then of course something I actually recognised, I was like, oh my god, yes, trimetric equations, so there was thankfully those few topics here and there that were things I knew and knew well, so I was confident in teaching. Um, and again, you know, a nice standard of a more four unit integration on top, but integration that we all know and love. Okay, um, what other thing was really interesting to me was in their stage three from, well actually basically all the way through primary school, the end of stage nine, you get a level of attainment on your report. It's not an A to E or an A to G in terms of GCSE, it's a level. So you might be given a level 5B. Now, you, there is no automatic matriculation. So if you get 5B this year and 5B next, next year, it means you've gained nothing. There's a, auto, they say expected growth is two thirds of the grade. So that means going from say a 5C to a 5A is an expected growth. And so kids get these on their reports each um, and they see if they're not growing, they, they know the expected growth is to um, two, level, two sub levels. Um, and I just found it really good because in just below the resources, the questions are level five questions, level six questions. So if you've got a kid who's really trying to get up to that next level, you can just print out another six questions and hand it to them. 
Um, the levels go from level one, which is what you'd be achieving at you know, your kindy level, all the way up to level eight. And level eight are the year nine level, are those kids that wow you. Uh, we gave, I gave three, three eight A's out in my year nine top class, and that was almost uh, unheard of. So it, it was really good. I, like, I really like the level system. Um, I think it's something that we could learn from, especially in terms of doing tests, because I had to write a test that covered, say, levels six to eight. So I had to consciously put in a third of my questions level six, a third of my questions level seven, a third of my questions level eight. And that's a concept, like I know we, we often talk about um, putting in level A grade questions, B grade questions, C grade questions, but it's optional if you get to do it anyway. Um, and this wasn't optional, this is how it had to be run. So it forced you into good practice. Um, I'm running out of time. Pros and cons just very quickly. Um, I love being challenged. I have, you know, in terms of having to learn some new maths, it's been a while. So that was really good for me. Um, one thing they have implemented, and you mentioned it, Daniel, which was lesson observations. It's not an option, it's a mandatory thing. A level of vice principal comes in, your coordinator comes in, and asks you what's with each other as well. So for me, I love that. Um, and the big pro, and Judy, if you're disappointed that I'm not talking more about this, which was the travel opportunities. Um, I had seven weeks whilst I was there having holidays, and so I just I, I had a car, I drove around, I flew to Europe, I did this, I did that, I went to Morocco for a long weekend. Because um, but that can't be the reason you go there because you, you work too hard just to do it. But it's a great perk. Um, just a few cons. I don't know anyone in England if you saw Hofstede or tomorrow. It's their big body of judges' school. It dictates so much in the school. And that was why there were so many negatives for me. It was their focus on maths and everything getting published that was why they were coming in and saying, Why aren't you going to get more C's? You're expected C's are only 80% in your class. All your class need to get C grade for their GCSE. And it just, it's not a pleasant environment. And book marking. They were insistent that every book must be perfect every two weeks, be marked, it be um, constructive criticism, be, we got all slapped on the wrist when the vice principal said it wasn't good enough, blah, blah, blah. And not as much technology as we have here, which I found a big struggle coming from a uh, laptop school to nothing anymore. And I think I ran out of time. Okay. <laughs>